One, I, I enjoy the New Year's resolution thing. Like, I don't always call it New Year's resolutions because New Year's resolutions get a bad rap, right? Nobody actually keeps New Year's resolutions. But I do like the, just the concept of a new year, a fresh start. You just kind of like, all right, last year was last year, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever. Um, this is a new year. We got to start fresh. So what do I want to see? In that? And I love that idea, that forward thinking. The, and, and I hope, I know some people are like, ah, New Year's resolutions fail right away. I'm not going to do that. And, and we just we just grow old and, and, and just grumpy and just like, yeah. I think it is, I think it is so healthy to set goals, to keep moving forward, to grow, to improve, to develop. Um, I mean, to, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, I think, I, think, I think it's good for us to continue to press forward. However, I'm, and for the longest time, I, New Year's is a great, a great natural launch pad for us for that. Um, but again, as I, I get so old these days, um, I, I'm, I'm learning that may, it may not always be the best time, right? And so I'm going, uh, but, but first I'm going, okay, uh, we'll look at the scripture, we'll, we'll push forward, we'll look at new resolutions and goals, and, and we want to grow and develop. And when I started thinking about all that, I just started to get tired. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what your holiday season has been like, okay? I don't, I don't know what it's been like, but here's mine, and I feel like there's probably some people who connect with this, some people absolutely not, but here's just where I'm at. So I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating, I'm reflecting, which I do enjoy reflection. I think it's good for it, just reflecting back. I'm just going, I'm tired, and I like, feel like, oh, why am I so tired? And I look back, like, for starters, like, for a week straight, we had people, like, we were hosting people in our house, like, I have a large family. Beth has a large family. Two out of the last five weeks, we've had those large families in our house for a week straight. <laughs> I love my family. I love my in-laws. Like, I was friends with my brother-in-law, Jeremy, before I ever started even met my wife. So, right, I love them, and I have to say them because they're here. So, I, I, like, I love... <laughs> I love my, my family, I love my in-laws, but like, I mean, they were, I mean your house has been full, right? It's, it, it, it's been, it's, it's, it's and I, it's fun and it's joyful, but uh, you know, 10 kids and 13, or 10 adults and 13 kids between three weeks old and 10 years old, whoo, and I'm tired. And then I throw on the fact that I'm, like, I'm reminded, oh, I have a five-month-old who really likes mom and dad and really is not hugely fond of everybody else, which just makes us, I'm tired. And as much as I love fresh starts, um, I've realized that the most New Year's resolutions and new goals, they, they fall in one of three categories, most of them. Um, either, either you do more of something that's good for you, you do less of something that's not, or you start something new, right? That's typically, that's typically your goals and resolutions fall in one of those three, three categories. What I'm, what I'm realizing is that, that, that a lot of them is start something new, right? If you ask anybody who's ever done any kind of startup venture of any kind, whether it's a startup business or in my world, the people I talk to and friends, it's church planners, or you talk to people that do startups, and one thing that everybody's going to tell you is that a good idea does not mean a successful startup, right? There's tons of good ideas that flop all the time. A, a successful startup or to start something new, ah, it's a new year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out every day this year. Like, you haven't worked out since like 1997, like but, <laughs> but now this is the year that it's going to be every day, right? In order to... In order to to have a, a startup, a new idea to, to really like get going, is it requires a massive amount of energy, right? To not just do it. And most people, and I see this happen, we come off the holidays, fun, joyful, all that is great, but we're tired. And then like we wake up the one day a year we stay up till midnight and then get up the next morning and expect to have the energy to start something new that we haven't done in like our whole lives, right? And that it's going to stick. It's foolish. We don't have the energy for it. You might. I don't. And, and, uh, and so I just think there's a lot of these, these goals and resolutions and whatever that are good, man. 
they're good. I, I do need to work out more, and I do need to pray more, read my Bible more. I do need to get up earlier and, and go to bed earlier, and all those, like, healthy, I need to eat better, you know, I need to cut out Krispy Kreme donuts or whatever. Um, I need to do all those things, but <clears throat> tomorrow may not be the best day to, like, start something brand new. And, he, and so as I'm, as I'm processing all of this, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, you know, what, where does that energy come from? How am I fueled? And, and there are practical things. When I add play into my life, that fuels me. It's time with my kids fuels me. After a, a busy, noisy week, quiet fuel. There's some things that fuel me. But when it comes to the spiritual matters, um, there's, there's some things in Scripture that we see and some things that we can learn. Um, and before, we're going to get to looking forward soon. I've got some really exciting things that God's put on my heart, and I'm ready to just talk about and move forward in. But, but sometimes, and I'm sure maybe you didn't host family, maybe you did, maybe you don't have a five-month-old in your house, but, but you've got, you know, a 25-year-old in your house, it's just as frustrating, right? <laughs> or way more so. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but today what I want us to do is, is sometimes we just we need to stop. Before we do the next thing, we've got to stop <laughs> and breathe <laughs> and look at God rest in his presence before I'm ready to do the next thing I gotta recover from the last thing and this isn't a Christmas New Year resolution thing this is a 365 thing you see we live in a world that is constantly one th- I gotta remember can't clap one thing one thing after the next like that's just how we roll right you know we just one and then the next and then the next and then the next and then the next and the next and and we don't slow down for a minute and then we wonder why we're tired and when we get a chance to take a break we just play really hard and we still don't rest and we're tired now maybe for you maybe you're on a completely different place maybe you're like this Christmas holiday season was amazing. It was restful and relaxing. I'm ready to hit the new year. Well, what we're about to do is going gonna, is, is gonna, to, I believe, help all of us, regardless of where we're at on the scale. But today, before we rush into the next thing, I want us to stop for just a minute. What I want to do today is I'll talk a little bit about our quiet time. And what I mean by that, and some people have different terms for it and different names for it. Some people call it my devotional time, my prayer time, my Bible reading time, my time with the Lord, whatever we call that. I like the term quiet time, and here's why. <clears throat> and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. Is because quiet time um, can include a lot of different things, but, but I think there is, there is a refreshing and a refueling that happens when we stop. Stop what? Stop everything. I know everybody's wired differently, and some people it's easier to slam on the brakes. You can just stop anything at any given time, right? There's some people that you're in a loud party, and you're just like, I'm leaving to go for a walk. I'm just stopping now, right? I'm just, I need quiet. There's other people that, that even when you're by yourself, you have a hard time just stopping and shutting down because your mind never stops. But I believe regardless of how you're wired, I believe there is health and there is a refreshing that we find when we stop for a minute and just just set our minds on the Lord. Step out of the busyness and gain an eternal perspective. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but what we're going to do this morning is we're going to practice that. And this might be a little bit different. Um, For some, some of you, you'll have, maybe you've never done what we're about to do this morning. Some of you, you've already done it. This, you've already done it before you come to church today. But, but, but we're gonna we're gonna practice um, what what we reference a lot. We talk about quiet time. We talk about your time with the Lord regularly here. But I, sometimes I think church is just we, we we give theory and we give information. But today we're gonna give you an opportunity uh, to put into practice that. Again, this might be challenging for some. It might be wonderfully encouraging uh, for others. 
Um, and it might be both encouraging and challenging. But this is what we're going to do. Before we do it, I'm going to tell you exactly what it's going to look like so as to not freak you out. Um, not that it's freaky, just it's different, right? So we're going to take the next 12-ish minutes, okay? And what we're going to do, um, in fact, I'm going to have, if I'm going to have um, uh, Victor and Aaron pass out some, uh, some just pieces of paper and some pen. So I want everybody to have just a piece of card stock or something. This is why it's beneficial to bring your actual Bible to church, because then you have something to write on when we do stuff like this. <laughs> uh, so uh, grab a, a piece of paper and a pen before you get started. But this is what we're going to do. We're just going to move through four different elements, and we're going we're gonna to go really, really quickly through this. Um, just three minutes on each little piece. And I'm going to give a little bit uh, more clarity and direction before we step into um, a new part of it. <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to get your paper and pen. <clears throat> but this is what we're going to do. We're going to practice what we talk about all the time. We talk about spending time with the Lord. We're going to talk about quiet time. We talk about these types of things. We're going to practice it. So here's four pieces. There's more that we could do, more elements we could do. Yeah, there's nothing on the paper. Um, and you won't even need it right away. Don't, don't start writing yet. Um, but here's four elements that we're going to do. First, we're just going to take a moment, and we're just going to be quiet for three minutes. We're going we're gonna to close our eyes, and there's nothing magical about closing your eyes, right? But, but in a moment, again, you don't have to, don't jump in right now. But in a moment, I'm just going to ask all of us, we're just going to close our eyes. And the closing our eyes has nothing to do with anything being spiritual. It's just sometimes there's so many, like, distractions around us, so we just close our eyes, it just kind of helps us center our thoughts a little bit. And, and I'm going to ask you to do something. There's a couple different ways you can look at it. Uh, First Peter, I believe it's 5, 7, I think, uh, Jesus talks about casting all our cares on him, talks about casting our anxieties on him. And, and in some capacity, you say, you know, this is what we're going to do, those three minutes. All the, the, the things of life, the stresses, the the relational strains, the financial crunch, the fear of what's coming tomorrow, all of those, all of those things that so often consume us and weigh us down. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask this. There's one way to look at it. Is we're just going to cast our cares on Jesus. We're going to cast our anxieties on Jesus like, like, like Peter says that we can do. We can just we can give them to him and say, listen, I can't carry these. For just the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to set these at the feet of Jesus. I like what, what Beth said a couple weeks ago, though, when she talked about her quiet time in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. He says, come to me, all who carry heavy burdens. And, and in that text, Jesus doesn't focus on our burdens and doesn't focus on our anxiety. He focuses on him. And so there's another element, and I, and I like this maybe even better, this picture. I mean, Peter says, cast your anxieties on him, but Jesus says, come to me. And in some sense, I I like picturing it this way. Like we say, I'm going to come to Jesus, and in his presence, all those other things just kind of melt off. Right? Because Jesus doesn't want my problems as much as he wants me. He's willing to take it. He's willing to shoulder it. He's willing to, 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 to do that. But what I really want us to do, three minutes. It's only three minutes. It might feel like a long time. But I want you to just sit there. I want you to relax. I want you to take a big, fat, deep breath as soon as we start. I just <sighs> Sometimes we, we, we're more weighed down than we even know. Because we don't stop. And those anxieties and those stresses, I want you to just, I just want you to sit with your eyes closed in the presence of God. Just sit. And I want you to think on Him. Whether you want to picture it like giving all these things to Him, or you just just let just, just be in His presence and let all the stresses, all of the worries, all of the busyness, all of the stuff, I want you to just let it like it's just like dripping off of you. Like it's just melting to the side, as we just are in his presence, we have this new perspective. That's all we're going to do. There's nothing else. We're closing your eyes and fixing our eyes on Jesus for a few minutes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to read some scripture. And I've got a scripture that we're going to put up there. We're not going to have it there yet. But it's just that, the same reference. I thought we'll just tag along with what Beth talked about in her quiet time a few weeks ago, that Matthew 11, 28 to 30. It just talks about casting our cares on him, and, and he's there for us. So if you want to read that text, if you have a favorite verse of Scripture, <clears throat> this would be a time to open up your Bible and read that. Maybe that verse, and maybe read the paragraph that it's in. Don't read a whole chapter. Just no more than three or four verses, because I don't want you... You have three minutes. I know you can read more than three verses in three minutes, but I want you to read it at least twice, two, three, four times. So pick a short little passage of Scripture. If you want to just use what we're using, I'm going to put... Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, up on the screen. 
uh, in, a, in a moment, not yet. When we do that, we're going to throw that up there. If you just want to read that, if you don't have your Bible, if you just want to read that, I want you to read it. And I want you to read it twice. And I want you to read it th- three times if you can. And, and I want you to read it slowly. I want you to allow the, 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 the text of Scripture to, uh, to, to resonate with your spirit. Let Jesus speak to you through his words. If there's a, a, a phrase, if there's a single word, maybe there's an idea that's not directly from the Scripture, but there's an idea that God puts on your heart as you're reading his word. I want you just to focus on him, his word, and listen to what he says. Not just for intellectual sake, but listen to the Holy Spirit talk to you through Scripture. I'm going to do that for three minutes. The next three minutes... <clears throat> I want you to write. That's why you have that, that, that paper there and a pen. Uh, if anybody doesn't have the paper or pen and you need something, if you can just raise your hand, I'll make sure. It looks like we got everybody. Um, then I want you, whatever God spoke to you while you're reading his word or whatever, maybe you're like, I don't know if God spoke to me. I don't know, I, I don't know, but here's a word that intrigued me. Write about the first thing that comes to your mind and write about the word. Process what that is. I believe that sometimes God just focuses our mind on some things. And so I want you to focus your mind. Just write. And you might go off on tangents or whatever, but you just, you just write. Maybe you start writing a prayer to God. Maybe you just write in what God's showing you, but you just write. And then the fourth thing we're going to do, and don't worry about, I will, I will cue you and, 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 and whatever, so don't worry about remembering all four of these things. I'll, we'll, I'll walk us through this. And the last one is going to be pray. Whatever you wrote down, now I want you to, we're going to pray about whatever that was that, that we wrote down. And, um, and I want you to just process um, that and just talk to the Lord. Put the pen and the paper down, and I want you to just talk to him in your own mind about whatever it is that he's showing you in this. Um, again, there's no the magic formula here, just four, I believe, tools that we have to help us connect with our God, okay? So we're going to do this. Again, maybe this is the first time you've ever done anything like this. For others, I know there's others in here, you've already done something very similar to this today um, before you even came today. So... Um, but we're going to try. And the other thing I'm going to do is, I'm not a huge music guy, personally. I don't have, like, the favorite bands, all this kind of, I'm not a, I'm not a huge music guy. However, I have noticed that, um, I have noticed that, that just in my quiet time, I just worship music, just music, there's something that just softens my heart in that. Um, and so I like to listen to music. And this is what I'm going to do, because I don't want to create, I don't want us to do something that we feel like has to be created with a big worship team. Um, or has to have big speakers and, and, sur- and surround sound. No. Um, this is how I usually do, do it with, for me in my quiet time, is I just have my cell phone, and I have music on it, and I hit play. So I'm going to do that, <laughs> um, and we're just going to have some, some music playing. And, uh, and so I'll cue you when we move to the next thing. Um, if you can't hear the music in the back, whatever, it's quiet time. So uh, <laughs> if it's quiet, it's quiet. So we're going to do this, all right? Is everybody, is everybody uh, ready for this? Okay, we, we're going to, this for some, it's new, it's different. This is what we're going to do. And I'm going to ask you, for the sake of just what we're doing today, I'm going to ask you to stick with the, the four things. Some of you are like, ah, oh, this is uncomfortable, so I'm just going to read something different. Don't do that. Just, just, just bear with us today. And let's, uh, let's stick to this thing. So again, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to spend some time with our eyes closed, fixing our eyes on Jesus, and just allowing just the, the busyness of life just to kind of melt away in his presence. I want you to just to think on Christ for the next few minutes. So let's do this together. So we're just going to sit quietly in his presence. Okay, now we're going to put the verse of scripture up, and if you'd like to read something on your own, don't spend two minutes finding something, but if you have a verse, you can read it, or you can just read along here, Matthew 11, 20, 28 through 30. Just so read it a few times and let the scripture speak to you, pull out a few words, a few thoughts, just kind of meditate on that for the next couple minutes. Now grab that pen paper that you have there. If you have your own notebook, I want you to spend just a few minutes writing about what stood out to you in that text that you just read. (laughs) 
Now I want you to kind of wrap up where you're at, finish your sentence or whatever. You can continue writing later if you like, but right now I want you to just, uh, that which God brought to your attention through Scripture and that which you've been writing, I want you to just now just talk to God about it in your own mind, in your own head, in your own words. I want you to just for the next uh, two and a half, three minutes here, I just want you to just to talk to the Lord right there at your seat. We thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Father, for, for meeting with us. We thank you, God, that you never leave us alone and you desire to be with us more than we could possibly desire to be with you. So, Lord, today we thank you for this time that we have. Lord, teach us, God, we ask, teach us to to grow in our ability to just be with you. Thank you for this time, Lord. So I want to get some feedback um, from just that time there. There's a couple common responses. Um, for some... Uh, first of all, let me just ask, uh, ask this. Um, for some, it's in challenging, and for some, it's enjoyable, and for some, it's both challenging and enjoyable. Maybe for others, it's neither challenging or enjoyable. There's no right answer, right? Because for me, I'll tell you, I still find challenge in some elements of doing this kind of practice. So let me just, I'm just, if you, if you don't mind, just show of hands, how many would you say, at least some portion of it, I would say it, uh, some part was somewhat challenging. Some say yes, some say no. Yeah, okay. Um, which part? Um, looking for some feedback. Which part for you was the most challenging? Quiet. That's what I figured we would hear. Uh, <laughs> that's what I figured. Being quiet. That that is often the the challenge of quieting our minds. And I'll be honest, I typically can't do it in three minutes. Okay. Uh, usually I get to the end of three minutes. Yeah? Uh, establishing, uh, like truly establishing, it's good one of those things, but uh, being not just quiet, but undistracted. Undistracted, yeah, like a quiet mind. Because my mouth isn't moving, physically I'm being quiet. Right. I'm shouting inside. Right. And it, it goes with all of that. I think, I think the more we practice this, the quicker we can do it. But I do think, man, three minutes is really hard to shut out all the noise in your head. Um, and uh, which goes to show you, being quiet time does take some time sometimes. Um, yeah, I would, I would say that was one of my, let me, let me ask this, how many of you said, and again, at least part of it, how many of you say to some degree it was enjoyable for you? How many say it was enjoyable? And it doesn't have to be. That's fine. It absolutely doesn't have to be. Um, uh, would somebody be willing, or enjoyable, I use that word because it's very, very broad. Would somebody be willing to expound maybe just a, a statement of phrase? Why, why was it? Was it refreshing? Was it encouraging? Did it bring clarity? George, you, you, you chatty today. All right, what do we, what do we got? What? Well, you started the fire, brother. <laughs> Yeah. And to stay still, uh, we don't have time for that. Mm. Uh, yes, we're in church, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. But out there, when I'm praying, even when I read my Bible, it's on the desk. Yeah. Where, I, where I'm getting ready to go to work, I'm getting ready to move. I, uh, I, can, I can pray while I'm walking, I can pray while I'm working. So um, a lot of times I don't. Right. <laughs> and and I almost I almost started with this on that quiet time. What I, I, I'm just curious here, how many of you found yourself realizing you were more tired than you thought you were as soon as you got quiet? Any, anybody else? Like this happens to me regularly. I'm try, like, okay, I'm gonna quiet my my heart, my mind, and all of a sudden everything starts getting real heavy, right? <laughs> 
and, and I think there's something to that. One is we, we probably are moving a little too much. But two, I think uh, there's something about that resting even in the presence of God. But yeah, it, it's, it's busy. So, so you say that it was enjoyable. You say just the, 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 the forced, quiet, and stop. Challenging, but enjoyable. Okay. How, <laughs> not enjoyable. No. It is hard. So, okay, so a number of you, a number of you will raise your hand about enjoyable. Again, I use that broad, broad term. Uh, define, define why it was enjoyable with another word or statement. So would somebody mind doing that? Yeah? Presence. Just the presence of God. Yeah? Inspiring. Just the weights falling off. Yeah, several with that. Yeah. Peace, refreshing. Um, safe. safe. I like that. When I was reading the takeaway and response, I felt that yoke and it was it was interesting and the yoke was so light mm. together. Mm. So it was like if you had slept instead of yoke, you know, just mm-hmm. lay on. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> One sentence, yeah. I didn't really expect a sentence. <laughs> That's good. On the camera. Peaceful but challenging. Yes, that's that's good. Now, here here's the thing. Um, that only took twelve minutes. And what's interesting is, is that, and I'm, I, okay, here, I pray and read my Bible most days. I'll even preface it with most, okay? Most days I pray and read my Bible. I don't always have quiet time, unfortunately. And I, and I think it's dangerous for us as a church to confuse the two. Um, I, I look at the life of Jesus. Did he pray and read the Bible? Absolutely he did those things. But uh, I don't remember who it was. Or George, you, you referenced this. You can, you can pray all day long. Through a work, you know, work happen, situations, things stress you out. You can just take a little, you know, God, I need you here. God, what about this? Or You, you can pray all day long. Um, you can even read your word. I, I'm learning a few years back I started using, like, listening to the Bible, like Bible app on my phone. Like, while I work out, I love it gives me a different perspective. The reader might read a text with a different inflection on different words than I would, and it brings new, but it's, it's still moving. I still got stuff going on around me. My mind phases out, and I come back in, and like, whoop, I missed a piece or whatever. You just keep on, like, I can read the Bible anywhere today. I can, I can or listen to it. I can pray anywhere I go. I can do those things. Those are good. Those are valuable, but they cannot replace quiet time. 
I hear this statement a lot. You know, hey, do you have a, like a quiet time, a, a time in your day, or devotional time, whatever, a time with the Lord that you spend every day or, or regularly with the Lord? Do you have that? And, and I hear this often. You know, I don't do that, but you know, I just I have time with the Lord all day long. So no, then is what you mean, right? Um, and, and I hear that a lot. But here's here's the thing. There's two elements to quiet time that that your, your quiet time with the Lord, there's two elements of quiet time with the Lord that if they are not present, it is not quiet time. Some would say maybe prayer or Bible reading. I'm not even going to say either one of those. Well, those are very frequent and important. There's two elements of quiet time that, that you cannot have quiet time without them. You know what they are? Quiet and time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Jesus, Jesus was constantly in communication with the, his Father. All day, every day, constantly in communication with the Father. And yet, Jesus, God in the flesh, the incarnate, the creator of the universe, regularly. And again, you guys know me. My favorite preaching is open up a text, read the text, and then explain the text and apply the text. That's like my favorite, right? We just got through John. You guys, you guys know me. But sometimes you have to look at the breadth of the text to really pull out some richness. Jesus regularly, read the Gospels, read every one of them. You're going to find a consistent pattern in the life of Jesus. In the midst of ministry, in the midst of life with, with his disciples, he regularly disappeared. He regularly withdrew. He would, he would go up onto the mountainside and say, you guys go ahead. I'm going to stay here until late at night because I just need to spend time with my father. Not so that just so he could go pray. He needed to go spend time with his father. He, they'd wake up in the morning and Jesus is already gone. They're looking all over the place because they can't find him. Listen, it, they couldn't find him because he didn't want to be found. When Jesus teaches us how to pray... Um, he says, you know, he gives us a little formula of our Father, art in heaven, all that kind of stuff. But before that, he says, when you pray, go into your closet, shut the door, and pray to your Father who sees what is done in his secret, because then he who sees what is done in secret will reward you. See, Jesus didn't own a closet because he didn't necessarily own a house that we know of, or at least in those three years, right, where he's doing ministry. So he went to his closet, which is outside of town up a mountain somewhere, somewhere where nobody else could find him. We only, we only have actually the, the, the inside scoop on Jesus' quiet time once, and that's right at the end of his, his, his life before he went to the cross as he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He takes all of his disciples. That's wonderful. He, go, he has a little church there, right? He's got church going on in Garden of Gethsemane. He says, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. He takes Peter with him, and then he even leaves Peter. He's one of his best friends. He says, you stay here. I have to be alone. Pray always. Read your word so you know it, right? But you, we cannot allow spiritual practices to replace quiet time. We've got to get quiet. And here's the deal. If Jesus needed to get quiet, shut out the, the voices in his head, how important do you think it is for us to do the same? And I know we can, we can give excuses why we can't do this. But that's just what they are, excuses. We, we talk, we love to say it's not, about, it's not about religion, it's about a relationship. And then we want to pursue relationship by doing spiritual practices? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Right? If it's not about religion, it's about relationship, then checking off prayer and Bible reading off my day's agenda is very religious and not very relational. What if our prayer... No, no, listen. I just finished a, a read the Bible in a year thing because it's good for me. I need, to, I need to keep on. I need to know the Word. I want to know the Word well. But knowing the Word is different than spending time with the Lord. What we did here was chewing on three verses of Scripture. It'll take you a long time to get through the Bible at three verses a day, okay? okay. Um, so there, there's a time and a place to sit down and just boom, consume Scripture, read entire books at a time, listen to mass amounts of Scripture at once, process it all. There's time and a place for that. But if we, we just can, we have to guard our hearts. We've got to guard ourselves because if that becomes a substitute for experiencing the presence of God on a daily basis, on a regular basis, then, then we're going to be shorting ourselves on what God intended for us to experience in him. It requires quiet. 
We got to get away from the distractions. We got to get away from that. And whatever you have to do to do that, do it. It's like I just don't know how you can pursue a relationship unless you like if Beth and I, my wife and I, if we just like had small conversation, chit chat here and there, coming and going in the midst of our busy schedules, but we never actually spent time one on one together, our relationship would crumble pretty quickly. I have to have uninterrupted time with my wife. That means phones down, time with her, where everything is quiet, even my cell phone, even my kids, to find a way to get them quiet. Sometimes I don't have time to, to find a babysitter, so we're going to hang out upstairs. You guys go watch a movie, right? Because <laughs> I just need, it's not the best parenting, but sometimes I just need time with my wife. I need it to be quiet. Um, the other thing is time. There is, no quanti- there is no quality time where there is no qual- quantity time. I stumbled through that. Let me try that again. <laughs> there is no quality time where there is no quantity time. Whether it's in our relationships or with it's God, if we try it, we're fooling ourselves. You know what the number one thing? Oh, we just got done with Christmas. And all, you know what my number one thing my kids want from me? Is my undivided attention. It's, they, they want me to wrestle with them. They want me to watch them as they climb on their ninja gym in their bedroom. <laughs> they, they, want me to, they want me to sit there and have them tell me about the last book they were reading or, or movie that they watched or the game that they played with their cousins. More than anything else, they want my undivided attention. I, I wonder what our Father wants of us. I wonder if it's any different. I wonder if we could just give them 12 minutes of setting the phone down and just saying, God, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on you for the next 12 minutes. For some of you, you do this all the time. Uh, For others, 12 minutes is a great place to start. Just three minutes on each of these practices. And what you'll find is you're going to run over, especially if you break it down like this. And there's more elements that you can add. Um, But if you want to have a genuine relationship with God that's not just religious, but it's actually relational, then you need to do relational things with God. For starters, give him a little bit of your time. Give him a little bit of your undivided attention, because I believe that he wants it more than my kids want mine. He wants my undivided attention. Phone off. Mind shutting down as best as I can. It's work, but you get better at it. He wants my undivided attention. Where I can get quiet, read his word, not to check off a list, but just to meditate on it. Let him speak to my heart and feel the peace that comes over me. See, uh, this becomes, if we learn to do this well, it becomes the fuel for the Christian life. I said, I'm not ready to make big, big uh, new goals. But if I want to get there, it means I got to be refreshed on a daily basis just like this. And what it does, it's amazing. Because when I find this quiet time, when I'm hurting, I find comfort. When I'm tired, I find rest. When I'm distracted, I find clarity. When I need a vision, I find purpose. It it gives me exactly what I need. Now, if I go to this quiet time, this is what happens to me sometimes, is I know that my quiet time produces those things, so then I start going looking for clarity. I start going looking for ideas. I start going looking for this comfort. And you know what I find? I don't find anything because those things are found in Jesus, not 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 in a process. The process helps us connect to Jesus, and he provides more than we could ever possibly think to expect. When we start chasing what he offers, we miss it. The process that we just engaged in, I knew you would hear from God because it's not about the process, it's about him. And when we connect to him, he's going to do incredible things. Will you give him 12 minutes? You want to make a New Year's resolution? Start with this. Give him 12 minutes. Make it, make it 15 if you want. Sometimes it's hard for me still. I do this regularly. Sometimes it's hard for me to, to know where to even start. Where did I get that scripture? Well, I mean, I've got some scripture that I'm going right now. January for me is going to be 
First and Second Thessalonians. I'm chewing on that for a while. Sometimes I don't know where to start, or I need I want something else to kind of focus my mind on Christ. So I'm gonna close with this because I want this to be crazy practical for us today. Okay, I want we're gonna we're gonna continue talking about our quiet time and some some values and some things that that, that we run into even next week. But I want today. I don't want to start talking about a talk. What was that? I don't want to start talking about a topic and, and people not having the tools or know-how in order to even engage it, where to start. So I want to make sure that we know where to start today. For some of you, this is way um, redundant. This is foundational stuff, though. If, if We might think we've got Christian life figured out, but if we don't have this figured out, this is foundational. We just have to do this. So I want to give you some, some, some tools, some resources. If you like piano worship music but here's the deal when i play worship music during my quiet time sometimes i stop having quiet time and i start singing okay so sometimes i just need stuff without music if you like just background music that you're listening to here's just if you want to write this down uh it's a friend of mine his name's greg stone incredible worship leader out of norfolk greg with two g's it's on google play i, don't, I think he's on itunes as well um greg stone he's awesome uh here's some things that have helped me all of our all of our leadership and a variety of people in the church that you look up to could have their own stack, but let me just show you what's helping me, and because I, I want to be a resource to you any way that I can, and, and I think we need to do this. Let me start with what I'm reading right now. Um, so this is what I do. My quiet time is not for reading. My quiet time is for focusing my mind and my attention on Christ. I try to read a lot of stuff. There are certain things that will never make it into my quiet time. I, preaching books don't make it into my quiet time. Leadership doesn't make it into my quiet time. A strength Finders, great book, won't make it into my quiet time, because that's all stuff that I do. The things, the books that I choose to read in my quiet time are things that help me fix my mind on Jesus, okay? So here's two things that I'm doing right now. Every once in a while, I'll pick up this, maybe once a week or so, uh, The Good and Beautiful Life. Uh, it's a second book in a, in a series of Good and Beautiful God. Incredible. It's just about God. It's knowing the God that Jesus knew. This is what it's all about. And, and framing our mind to go to see him, the Father, as Jesus saw the Father. Uh, incredible books. Um, by James Bryan Smith, Good and Beautiful God is the first one. I just finished it. Um, and sometimes I'll just, for, for one, maybe one quiet time a week, I'll pick up this book. I'll just read a chapter because it focuses on my mind, and I just chew on that in my time with the Lord. Um, more regularly, I do something shorter. Here's a book that I picked up just recently. I've only a few chapters in. Letters by a Modern Mystic. Uh, it sounds super like New Agey, but it's not. Trust me. Um, Letters by a Modern Mystic by Frank L-A-U-B-A-C-H, I'm uh, Labach, I don't know. Um, it's about a guy who's, it's his journal, some uh, portions of journal entries whose attempt in a year is to, f- to think about God every single minute of his waking life. <laughs> Not with any, you know, he doesn't succeed perfectly, but that's his goal, is to have God every minute of every day. And it's, it's just interesting read, uh, whatever. So it just helps me focus my attention on Christ and seeing how other people are doing that as well. So I'll read that and then I'll go into some of these other disciplines like prayer and Bible reading and quieting my heart, whatever, just to kind of help be an anchor for me. to. Sometimes you sit down and I'm like, God, I just need to have time with you and I don't know where to start. So these are, are just our quiet time starters for me. Um, some books like this. Here's some that have been classic for me that I, I've, I've gone in and out of a zillion times. Um, and uh, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers, if you like old writers. Uh, this, is, I think, is the NIV uh, redone edition because it helps me. Um, original ones in K- King James. But um, they're like one page of devotional thoughts. Again, they're just, uh, just tiny little things to anchor my thoughts to to help me fix on, on Christ. I, if I just read this, some people have done this. Like my devotional time is reading a devotional and then going on my day. That's good um, and it can be used for that, but these really are great when you pair it with scripture and prayer and just really focus and chew on, on what God's got for us. Here's another one that both uh, helps with learning how to do my quiet time better and, and just kind of helps focus my thoughts. Secrets of the Secret Place. It just talks about different kind of disciplines within your quiet time. Anyway, uh, by Bob Sorge. So, I don't know how to pronounce his name either. Sor- is it Sorgi? Sorgi, okay pronounce all of the vowels, I guess. All right. Bob Sorge, um, another good read. Um, that's just some of the things that I'm reading right now. And I, I bring those into my quiet time. Like I said, I don't bring all of my books into my quiet time, right? But every once in a while, I'll bring something to help focus my attention. Because listen, it's challenging 
I know that. You've been doing it for a long time. It's challenging. Um, but listen, we the church, I love what Pastor Robin said. There's, there's an element, like we're all doing this together. But I believe that's what, that's what tomorrow morning should feel like. As I go to my quiet place, and I know that I am I'm connecting with God, maybe at the exact same hour of the day, but collectively with the body of Christ here at Crossroads, just in our own homes around the place, because we're seeking him, not just doing religious things. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so I leave you with this. Listen, if we are going to be who God has called us to be, if we're going to ever get to a point where we can, we can run forward with the gospel message that he has called us to, where we can set goals, we can do new things, we can uh, see what God is, is, is doing in us and through us and accomplishing new and great things for God, then we've got to have the fuel to be able to do that which he's speaking to our hearts. And that comes in t- quiet time with our Lord. And so hopefully today, we can, we, I want you to take away two things. My quiet time has to consist of two things. Quiet and time. But listen, it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm going to have the worship team come. Let's, let's, let's pray and, cl- and close our time together. God, we thank you so much for um, just this refreshing time that we have today.